hey, so have you ever walked into, like say, let's say you walked into a store. This is back when we could walk into stores. And you realize that the thing that they had advertised wasn't quite the way it was supposed to be. Like you thought it was going to be like this 24 inch television monitor, whatever it was. And it ended up being like this big. It was more like for a toy. Or have you ever walked into um, an online store? Maybe you just actually like went onto their website and we're like, wow, that looks amazing. And it's 50% off. And then you went to check out and it's like, oh, but just kidding, because this doesn't apply. This doesn't somehow qualify for the 50% off. Hey, Marguerite, nice to see you here. There's, there's bait and switch, which is one thing, right? But there's another thing to completely misrepresent what you're getting. There's a way to misrepresent <laughs> who you really are so that when you get a new client or when you, and hello, Veronica, hi, sweetie. When you engage with a new client or potential client, are you showing up the way you said you would? Are you saying up the way everything online said you would? I have been in this industry for way too long. <laughs> That's not true. It's actually, it's getting more and more fun. Branding and marketing is one of those things that changes almost constantly. And it's part of why I love it. Back in my corporate world, so it's been almost, almost 13 years to the day. Um, I remember working with, with these independent contractors. They worked for a larger corporation, a larger um, corporate brand. And part of my job, and I built a team to help me, and we created brands and marketing for all these independent agents. And I don't know if you remember, maybe it's just a Utah thing, maybe it was just a 90s thing, but they had these plays called Glamour Shots in the local malls. Like it was really attractive for like something, you know, the teenagers would come up and have a party and everybody would get, I mean, I'm talking glamour, like the makeup, the hair, the outfits, I mean, feathers, like ways that you wouldn't normally dress, right? Like it was just this fun event to go do. And what I was noticing was some of these professional independent contractors would come in and say, I have new headshots and they would send it to me and it would be one of these glamour shots and not recent ones. Like they would come in and say, here's this headshot. I want this on my business card. I want this on all my brochures. I want it on my website. I want it on all of my online presence. And I would look at it and go, is this your daughter? And not to be rude, but it was 20 years old. We have changed in 20 years. Yeah. I mean, think about, you know, those of you who are not 20 yet, you've changed in 20 years too. <laughs> I, the whole point of having a photo on anything is so that when somebody actually sees you in person, they recognize you. The whole reason to show up as a person rather than just a business brand is so that you can make a connection with people. If you are showing up other than who you are, that connection never gets to be made. Or at the very best, it's a business card surface level connection. When you say, this is who I am, naturally, authentically, genuinely, people know exactly what they're gonna get when they start working with you. Whether that's just interacting with you on a social platform, if that's following your YouTube channel or your blog, if that's actually connecting with you on a level that says, I want to work with you now. I know you have what I want. How can I have more? So if you are putting up this persona that isn't genuine, there's a couple different things that are going to really become difficult. One, it's going to be hard for you to keep that up. I remember several years ago, I was speaking on someone else's stage and I had met with these women, the hosts of the, and really professional. I've seen all their stuff online, very polished, very upscale. I'm like, excellent. What a great crowd. This is going to be amazing. And I got to the event and it walked in. It was a little bit different than what I expected, but it's okay. Like everybody's event is a little different than what they hope it's going to be. But then they got up on stage to introduce me in holy jeans and a t-shirt and not what their brand had conveyed. There's no judgment. You, especially when it's your event, oh my goodness, dress the way you want to. And clearly, this woman had a personal brand that was not the same as her business brand. And that's okay too, as long as that's how you celebrate it, as long as that's how you show up and say that it's going to be different. So it wasn't so much like a judgment, but it was such a disconnect. I wondered for just a moment if I had the right place, if I had the right people. So it's hard if you are not naturally buttoned up, polished, I have all the answers, but ask them, ask your questions from a distance, but really you're a personal, give me a hug, love you big, I'm the expert next door, let's figure this out together person. 
that's a huge disconnect for you. That's hard to keep that up in your business. If you are informal, if you like connections, if you like looking right in their eyeballs and making it and smiling, if you are more of that personal, personable, um, fun, let's get this done together kind of a person, make sure your brand reflects that. It's way easier for you to maintain that. You're going to be more fulfilled because you get to show up as exactly who you naturally are. Your genius, your authentic voice is going to show more and be easier to stay that way and stay consistent and stay cohesive when it's actually yours. So it's easier for you, first of all. Second, your potential clients come in, they have no idea what the heck they're getting into. If what you are and what you're putting out there is that different, there is an immediate disconnect, there is immediate distrust, there is a, what did I get myself into? And if this is fake, how much of the other stuff is fake? Even if it's not on a conscious level, you've got people looking at you going, this feels suddenly, it feels weird. I know you've experienced that, right? Like we talked about in the store, you walk in and it's like, this isn't quite what I had in mind. Or you get into a Facebook group or you get into a networking group and you walk in and you think, this isn't how they sold it to me. This is not how they conveyed it. This is not what I was expecting. That happens when you brand other than who you are as well. So make sure it's consistent. There's no good, bad, or ugly as long as it's really true. You're going to be happier with it because it's easier to handle and it's more fulfilling when you could express that. And your ideal clients are going to clamor for that. If you are trying to attract the people other than who you actually get to work with, that's part of what that happens. Um, one of the things I've noticed is you can tell if you're not quite showing up the way you authentically naturally would is if you go back through really quick and read any copy that you've done, your social posts, your blog, um, anything on your website, anything in your opt-ins, are you talking to the cheap seats? Are you talking premier? Are you talking to the people who can't afford to pay you? What are you doing? If you're talking to the people who don't need what you have, but you try to elevate your speech to that, what are you doing? When they show up, they're going to be disappointed. When they show up, you're going to be disappointed because you'll be like, oh, this isn't who I thought I wanted to work with. If you've been in business longer than probably two or three years, you've probably experienced that of, I thought I wanted to work with this and this and this. And yet here I am attracting this and this and this. Go back and look at your marketing. Maybe it's not actually saying what you think it is. That's one of those parts of your persona, part of your brand that even if you show up and you are dressed the way you want to and you have the makeup and the hair and the, and the vocabulary that you want to, it may not be showing up that way consistently across the board. That disconnects for you, that disconnects for them. And there's nothing sustainable about that. And there's nothing fun in that. Does that make sense? Look at the last five or six people that you've worked with. Look at the last five or six people you've been in networking events with. Are they actually your people? Because I got to tell you, I've watched this happen, not just in client relationships. I've watched it happen in networking groups too. I uh, spoke to a woman who's been in the same networking arena, same several groups in her area for probably three or four years. And she said to me, in four years, not one person has sent me something. I haven't gotten any business out of this. And I thought, wow, four years is a really long time to keep doing the same thing and not getting the better results. But there's a couple different things you get to look at. How are you, how are you presenting? I've shared my story of how I used to show up, how I used to talk at a, a networking group. And I thought I was saying one thing. And until I actually heard my words repeated back to me, I didn't realize how off my game I was, how much I was just, just spewing the words that, I mean, this has been 12 years ago, 13 but I didn't realize how off my message I was until I heard somebody send it back to me. And I went, oh, wow, that sucks. That's kind of rotten. I didn't realize those were the words. So sometimes it's the way you present yourself. And sometimes it's because it's not your group. They're just not that into you. They don't need what you have. They don't want what you have. They are past what you have. They're not ready for what you have. Take a look at the people you're hanging out with, virtually or, or otherwise. Who are you networking with? What are the Facebook groups you're engaging in? And how are you engaging? Are you engaging as the real you? Are you putting on a costume? This time when we're home, when we don't get to go out and play, 
this is a perfect time to take stock of how we're showing up. Because I will tell you right now, you get to vote. This is, this is so the part where you get to decide, you get to make those decisions. Am I showing up? Hey, Diane, am I showing up professional? Am I showing up formal? Am I showing up rock star? Am I showing up librarian? Where, where does your personality fit into all of that? This is the perfect time for you to take stock of, wow, what I'm creating in my business isn't really what I thought I was creating in my business and it's not working. I mean, we've been talking about pivot now for what, seven weeks, eight weeks. Maybe this is where you get to start. Maybe part of the pivot is doing something you really love. Maybe it's showing up as who you really are so that you get to, you get to make the smiley happy face all the time. You get to do the happy dance all the time because you're doing what you love and you're working with people who excite you. Doesn't that sound like a way, way more fun way to do business? It's, and it's all, the power is yours. The power to create that kind of a brand that sets you up for that level of success, that level of fulfillment. That's yours, baby. Take it, run with it. Create something that excites you. Even if I talk to people today who are in industries where their businesses are taking off, like they are just skyrocketing and they're like, I can't believe it. I've, I've never been this busy. I've never been this successful. Everything's going really well. Awesome. Do you like it or is it just keeping you busy? Do you like it or is it just making you money? Because there's a ways to have both, by the way. There's ways to brand so that you get both. So I invite you today, take a minute, go back. And if you can't, I know we can't see our own eyebrows, but try. Go look in the mirror and see if you're showing up the way you would naturally show up. Are you wearing that onstage costume and you come back to the house and go, Ugh, now I have to take off my work clothes and put on my real clothes. How close are they meshed? Because you can mesh them. You can put them together. Go look at your online presence. Go look at how you're showing up on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on anywhere else, any podcasts you're on. Go look at your blog. Does it sound like you? Does it sound like you would have that conversation with somebody? Or is it posturing? Posturing is not fun. And there's no sustainable, fulfilling, profitable way to do it. So take control over your persona. It's one of the most important steps. This is not about what you think your ideal client wants. Your business is about you. That's where it starts. So take a minute, go back and see how you're showing up. Is it really you? It's what legends do. Be real, be you. The world's waiting for it. We can't wait for you to show up. We cannot wait to see what you're gonna do, what you're gonna create, how you're gonna serve your people. I can't wait to see you. I'm. I have somebody close to you give you a hug. I miss my humans, for sure. I got to network this morning with Utah Leading Ladies, and um, it, it fills me up. I like my people. And mostly because at least half of them showed up as who they really are. Did you? Wherever it was you were on a Zoom call today, was it really you? Try it. You'll like it. And until I get to see you in person, rock on.